Hello, my name is Catherine Sloshington Smythe, and this is Fifty Shades of Bass, Chapter 5. It was the day before the county fair, and Tabitha had organised a little soiree for some of the local DJs. Nothing too extravagant, just a few interesting folk, white wine, and ketamine. The invitation said eight, but Tabitha knew no one would arrive before 9.30, such is the way with trendy folk. It was quarter to nine, and Tabitha was sat alone, naked, watching a rerun of a classic episode of Hollyoaks. Tabitha had always had a soft spot for Paul Denan. There was something about his pea-shaped head and complete lack of charm or decorum that made Tabitha's ovaries sing like a castrati Rick Astley. She imagined herself dressed as a vet, up to her elbow in young Paul Denan, his eyes bulging as he struggles to scream through his ball gag that she's locked to his face. At 9.30, she had washed and dressed herself, scrubbed the fanny batter off the sofa and was ready to greet. First to arrive was dubstep superstar and gay icon, Borgor. He wore little more than a cravat and a wry smile. He had with him a young Asian boy, who seemed a little disconnected and never said a word. The boy wore only red pants and can't have been any older than 18. Second to the party was Psytrance legend DJ Mumdance. He had clearly been on the sauce all day, had a copy of Razzle under his arm, and smelt like last week's roadkill. Last to join them was rising star of bass music, simply known as Filthy Ken. He wore a hooded sweatshirt, a snapback hat, and a fantastic erection. They talked for a number of hours as Tabitha passed round plates of exquisite French cheeses, poached badger nipples, pickled pelican penis, and of course, horse tranquilizer. Mumdance dabbed away at the ketamine like a pro, while Borgor lay back on his chaise long and allowed the boy to simply blow it up his rectum with a series of glued together McDonald's straws. Filthy Ken partook in none of the K, as he said it played merry hell with his eczema. Instead, he just occasionally popped a small acid tab underneath his foreskin, and that seemed to keep him in great spirits. It wasn't long before the conversation turned to the enormous oil painting of Sasha and Digweed wrestling naked that hung above Tabitha's fireplace. It was at least five by five meters and was painted with the most incredible photorealism. Their muscular arms locked together in an embrace of either deep anger or intense passion. It was hard to say. Borgor's boy had taken particular interest in the painting and was jumping up and down waving his hands frantically. Borgor did his best to calm the boy by whacking him with Mumdance's rolled up jazz mag, but there was no stopping him. The boy had climbed the fireplace and had begun to beat his meat like a red-headed stepchild. It was a compelling sight, and the others looked on with wide eyes, excited to know what the boy would do next. In a flash, he leapt off the fireplace and grabbed hold of the ceiling fan with one hand. He hadn't stopped wanking for a second as he began to whirl round and round like a peculiar little wanking helicopter. Faster and faster he whirled, and harder and harder he pulled. The faces of the guests were turning rapidly from excitement to horror as the boy reached a fantastic speed. Then, as quickly as it had begun, the boy had lost his grip. He was flung at high speed directly into the painting. He fell a good six feet to the ground and closed his eyes. There was a few seconds silence in the room. Bravo! shouted Mumdance. And then he jizzed.